All righty. I'm back. So um, let's go over the lab. Let's go over our, our, our mixing lab. The idea behind this here is to um, uh, uh, just kind of get your, get your ears uh, trained, start training your ears, start training your, uh, uh, your mixing sensibilities and all that kind of stuff. You're going to have to pardon me because there's, I have, <laughs> I'm at my house. <laughs> And uh, I have uh, a daughter, <laughs> I have a wife, and I have five cats, and they're all trying to bug, they're all bugging me, right? Currently, Joey, Joey the cat, is uh, uh, prowling about, um, looking for something to do. <laughs> we'll see. Looking to bother me is what he's looking to do. All right, so... Um, so this is going to be it for class and everything. There's cats. Everybody's going to be bugging me. All right. So uh, let's get into this. So uh, the, the idea here is um, uh, the idea is to get used to mixing, getting used to decent audio, uh, get learning how to make some good decisions about how things should sound. Right. <clears throat> so um, the, the the lab is not going to be graded um, by how good your mix is. Right. Um, more than likely, you're not going to make good mixes until you're, you've got some experience under your belt. That's just kind of how it is, right? So, it's definitely true for me. So, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, so let me pull, pull up a mix. This is kind of what you're going to do, right? So, you got Pro Tools going, let's say. Let me pull up Pro Tools here. <clears throat> uh, Here's Pro Tools, and I'm going to, if you look over here in this window right here, I've got, um, this is my hard drive, all right? This is my session files backup. I'm going to go over here to um, uh, Audio 101, all right? Now, what you're going to do is you're going to download your this, this session, all right? Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm going to email it or you're going to put it on Blackboard. Blackboard may not let me put it up there. Either way, you're going to end up with this session. Right, mine happens to be in sessions folder, and Star Trek. Right now, <clears throat> here's what I've got. I've got um, I've got uh, I've got. Let's see here. I've got two sessions. Um, I've got two two songs for you guys to mix. You choose one or the other, or do both. What the heck? It doesn't matter. Right. Um, depending on how much time you have, right? Hopefully, well, whatever. Uh, I've got two versions of each one, right? And so if you look over here, right? Oops, I'm sorry, you guys can't see that, can you? Here we go. There we go. Right? So I've got two versions. So there's a metal, uh, there's a metal, it's a metal band, right? Both of these, I made these, both of these recordings, right? So there's a metal band. There's a, a metal band with Pro Tools. If you end up, if you have Pro Tools on your computer, Right, that's the one you're gonna do. Right, if you don't have Pro Tools and you've got something else like Cubase or Logic or GarageBand works, maybe I, I, I think I'll be able to show you a GarageBand version. Right, uh, if you have GarageBand, whatever works. Right, um, the idea here is to mix, and so there's like two versions. Right, so we're gonna use the one that's Pro Tools. I'll show you the other one here in a little bit for those of you who don't have Pro Tools. So there's my folder. Metal Pro Tools, and then actually, let's do Star Trek first. <laughs> Probably, maybe uh, let's do Star Trek first. Put Star Trek Pro Tools, uh, uh, the metal ones, you know. Um, <clears throat> so, so, Star Trek, right? And so, this is the session file. The, the .ptx file is the session file. <clears throat> the .ptx file does not contain any music in it. The music is in the audio files folder, right? So, there's my audio files. This is just the session file. Right? This is almost like the, a Microsoft Word document, and then the audio files is where you have all your pictures and your tables and your charts, right? That kind of stuff, right? Anyway, let me boot this guy up here, all right? So I double click that, and it pops up. There's my mixer window. Here is my uh, edit window, right? Kind of cool, all right? Let's go through here. I'm gonna let's go to the let's go to this window right here. Right? 
So you'll notice that everything's been labeled. I'll show you all about that later. Right? Just get for now. Just get familiar with what we're doing here. Right. Uh, so this is their, this is what they are. Right. We have kick one uh, and kick two. Um, kick one, I believe, was close to the drummer's knee by the beater of the of the bass drum. Kick two is the one that's typical, like a normal one that's in front. There's a snare mic. That's the one that's pointed at the snare. Right? This is the drums, by the way. Uh, overheads, these are microphones that were over the drummer's head, pointing down, listening to the drum kit as a whole. Right? And then this right here is drum reverb. Right? You'll hear this in a second. This is bass. Here's, a, here's the piano. Right? And here's the, the reverb for the piano. Reverb is kind of like echo. Right? We'll talk more about that later in the semester. But it's kinda, you'll hear it. It'll be obvious. Right? Let's listen to each one of these. Right? I'm going to go over here. Uh, I did. I used my shortcut. That was Command Equals. You could do Window. And go. We're going to go to the Edit Window. Click there. I'm just going to click somewhere here in the middle, right? <clears throat> and we're going to come back to this window here, and we're going to listen to these things, right? So this is the first thing you want to do when you first start your mix. Give it a listen. See what it. So see what we have, right? And so kick number one. Let's see what that is, right? Again, this is by the drummer's knee, right? So we should end up getting, if he's playing the kick drum, this is, kind of, this is a jazz thing. It's kind of a quiet jazz thing. Um, there's not a lot of kick drum in this song. Uh, we should hear kick drum and a little bit of the bottom of the snare, right? So I'm going to push play. That's the space bar. Yeah. Here's the... Here's the kick two. Very traditional jazz kick drum sound, right? Boom, it's got a note. Boom, boom, boom. Right? Notice that there's a lot of other stuff in these microphones, right? Like you hear a little bit of the cymbals and you hear a little bit of the snare in there, right? That's pretty common. As long as it's not too loud, it's okay. Right? Here's the snare. This is the microphone that's over the drummer's head, but it's it's called ride, right? If you look over here, right? It's overhead ride, right? So it's over the ride symbol. He was a right-handed drummer, and the ride symbol was on his right side. So he's playing, right? Now the reason I don't call it overhead left and right is because we don't know whether it's from my perspective looking at the drummer or from the drummer's perspective as they are looking at the drums, right? Overhead ride means it's the microphone that's over his head but looking at the ride cymbal. Let's listen to that. Sounds like cowbell in there, isn't it? Let me see if I can find a place where he's actually playing the, the ride cymbal. There it is. There it is, playing the ride cymbal. There we go. So here's the one that's looking kind of at the hi hat, All right? At some point, he's probably going to play the hi. Oh, there he is. You hear that? Chick, chick, chick. All right. Typical jazz thing, All right? So this is the drum reverb. So this is, again, kind of like echo. Listen to this. And I actually, I recorded this for you guys. And you're going to add however much you think is appropriate, right? There really isn't a wrong or a right. It's, it's just what sounds good, right? So this is what this sounds like. Right? Sounds like echo. Sounds like you're in an arena or something, right? Or a cave. Here's the bass. Oops, sorry. Now, if you listen really carefully, you can hear that the, the, some of the, the drums are leaking into this guy's mic. Here's the piano. Here's the piano reverb, 
right? All right, there we go. And so <clears throat> we're gonna mix this. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna mix it, right? So the way I like to do is I like to start with the most, what I think is the lean thing. Uh, usually it's vocals, but since there's no vocals here, I think, I think the, the lead thing is the piano, right? So I'm gonna start with the piano. I'm gonna put it up to zero. So this is, this is the Star Trek theme, the old Star Trek theme. We're talking like old, old Star Trek from like the late 60s, I think, right? Captain Kirk and Spock and um, Doctor, whatever the guy's name was. I can't remember his name. But uh, this is from the 1960s. Uh, sounds a little bit different from the original score for the, for the TV show, but there we go, right? Uh, I think it's a pretty cool record, pretty cool ready when I first, actually, <clears throat> I recorded this at uh, some of you guys, some of you musicians know that uh, know over this place called the Music Lab. Uh, the Music Lab is a rehearsal complex here in Austin where, um, uh, well, it's a rehearsal space. They actually had a, a kind of a interesting little studio. Uh, they had a lot of really good equipment and, um, and a, their main cutting room was actually interestingly good. Um, <clears throat> Some of the other stuff wasn't all so good, but it was kind of it was kind of cool, kind of a new, unique thing. And so this was actually recording at the recorded at the Music Lab Recording Studios. I think they called it Studio Fifty Seven. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, why did I bring that up? I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Um, here we go. Something I also want to mention here. Um, uh, this is a, these are all mono tracks, right? And the, rate, the way I can know this in Pro Tools and most digital audio workstations is that the, the meter, this is the meter when you see the, you know, this thing up here, right? The, the little light. The meter is just one thing. Over here, if you'll notice, the piano is two meters. That means it's stereo. Not only that, but you have two pan knobs. Stereo is two channels. There's a left channel and then there's a right channel. Or you can think of it as the left speaker and the right speaker, right? And that's what, that's what that piano is, right? So I use two microphones on that piano. Uh, one kind of over the low end, one kind of over the high end, right? And so and I recorded those both. And so I recorded them onto a stereo track, right? Like this here. Like that. Right? Anyway. Uh, there's our piano. So let me add some. Uh, needs a little bit of reverb. Let's see if. Let's add some reverb. You can add too much. It's too much. The next most important thing is the bass, right? Uh, the bass just provides the bottom part of the harmonic structure, right? So I'm, I'm gonna throw the bass up there, right? Let's hear it. So if you think of this as like a lounge thing, right? So you go to some to a restaurant somewhere Sunday morning, you can get some brunch or something, and uh, uh, it's just a piano and a bass. This would actually work just fine. What do you think, Joey? Joey's over here listening with me. Joey, what do you think? Come and say hi to everybody. No? He's 
little bit more. There we go. So what I'm noticing now is that everything's kind of right up the middle. What I want to do is I want to pan some things. Like the, the piano would be kind of cool to take the low end, or like the, the, whatever track was the low end in the, in the um, whichever mic was the low end, and pan it to the left or the right and do the other one the opposite way, right? And so I'm going to use these pan knobs. Check this out. Ah. Now that's a little bit too wide, so I'm going to narrow that up a little bit. Yeah. So his left hand, you can hear dun dun dun. that versus right it sounds kind of cool we'll spread out right I'm just stopping it and starting it over again here we go now this reverb I want to have it all spread out too so the reverb sounds like a room or a cave or whatever right so I'm going to actually pan that super wide as if the piano is kind of here, you know, not like to write this, but the piano is kind of like here and spread. And then the reverb itself, the room that it's in is like surrounding it. Right. So check this out. Hear that? So now I'm going to add, now we can add some of the drums. I'm going to start with the overheads. Oftentimes you don't, but in this jazz context, I think I'm going to start with the overheads, right? Throw up the other one. How about if I take the drum overheads and spread them left and right, kind of like I did the piano, right? So I can make it sound like the drum kit is, you know, not just like right in the middle, right? Make it sound like it's kind of wider, as if I'm standing in front of it or something, right? Like that. Yeah. snare too loud throw the throw, not putting that kick notice that that ba that that bass drum is doing is kind of doing what the bass is doing right the kick drum sometimes they call it a bass drum the kick drum, bass drum is doing the same thing that the bass is, the rhythmic, rhythmically, right? They're, they're actually designed to function as one thing, right? So I, I want to tuck this in right, kind of right with the bass, right? I don't want it to be louder than the bass or too soft, but I want it to tuck it in right with the bass, right? So they're like one instrument. <laughs> Then I'm going to bring up the drum reverb. <clears throat> and 
too much, right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pan it hard left and right, so it's that reverb sounds like the drums are in a room, right? So the room is enveloping. This reverb is enveloping the drum kit. Guys, I'm gonna mute this. No reverb. There we go. too much reverb on the drums. So there we go, right? So I hit stop, space bar, and I hit the return, go all the way back to the beginning. <clears throat> let's go to the, uh, let's go to the uh, uh, edit window. There we go. And I'm going to actually render this mix, right? So I want to save the mix, right? And so I'm going to come over here and remember to always save, just in case your computer crashes. So I'm going to come up here. If you see where my mouse is, it's called the timeline. I'm going to click and drag here. And I'm going to define how long. You guys see that being highlighted up there, right? So I'm going to define how long my mix is going to be, right? So I'm going to actually, like I said, render this mix or mix it down. There's a bunch of different words people use. Now, had I just used the command, please mix this Pro Tools, it would mix the music and the silence as well. And that's not what I want. I only want it to mix up to that point right there. So I've highlighted the end of the thing, gone all the way to the end, and this is how you render your mix. File, bounce to, this is the command, disk. And I'm going to bring this in, this is what comes up. Here's what you want. you want. You want it to be a wave. You don't want it to be an MP3. MP3s are terrible, right? So you want it to be a wave. You definitely want it to be interleaved, right? And the bit depth, it just kind of depends on what you're going to end up doing with it. You can just leave it at 32-bit floating point. The sample rate is actually 44.1. There you go. And the file name is going to be called Audio One Star Trek. All right. There we go. Now, I can hit bounce, and what it's going to do is it's going to mix it. It can do it in real time, or if I hit offline, It'll just do it really quick, all right? Let's do this really quick. Let's hit bounce. Ta-da! It's done. We want to check to see where that is. So I'm going to go to my Finder, which is like File Explorer on Windows, right? If I go to Bounced Files, there it is. Look at that. I click that, and I could. There it is. There we go. All right, so there you go. Um, let's, uh, let's go back to Pro Tools. I'm going to quit, or I'm going to close this session, and I'm going to open up that metal one so you guys can see that one, right? So here's metal. I'm going to open up the Pro Tools one. Got this guy here. Now, I've actually already gone through here and done a, quite a bit of work. Um, this, this, again, this is, a, this is a session that I, um, I recorded in the not so good, not the nicest studio with the nicest equipment. It was actually kind of not so nice equipment. Eh, it turned out okay. But uh, um, it's, it's metal. <laughs> and uh, it had a bunch of drum tracks, had two bass tracks, had a bunch of guitar tracks. But I actually mixed this down for you guys so you can 
so it's a little bit easier for you guys to, to mess with, right? And so uh, if we come in here and listen to this here, let's go listen to Here's the drums. Make sure we're in the beginning here. So I've got stereo drums. Like I said, there was a kick drum mic, two kick drum mics, two snare mics. There was a microphone on each tom, two rack toms and a floor tom. There were overheads, there were room mics, and there was something I call underhead mics. Uh, there's like, I don't know, probably like 12 mics, but I mixed them down into this stereo thing here, right? So let's listen to, let's do this a different way. I'm gonna hit solo, the solo, and when, when you hit the solo button, what that means is all you listen to is the, um, all you're gonna hear is that thing that you've got soloed, right? So let's listen to those drums. Oh, sorry, let's listen to the drums. Here's my bass. I'm going to turn it up. Sounds like metal bass. Now you might be wondering, well, why does it sound so... Well, usually in metal, there's so much going on that if it was like a normal bass guitar sound, it would get completely lost. Uh, with the guitars and the vocals and the drums and all this other stuff, right? So that's why bass players, metal bass players, dial up a sound like that, right? Because it helps it cut through the bit, the din, all the craziness, right? Right? Here's a guitar. Sounds like a metal guitar. Here's the other one. Sounds like the other one, but it's actually, there's two different takes. It's two guitar players. One guitar player is doing one thing, one, the other guitar is doing, doing something very similar, right? Let's listen to it. Let's get the, let's do this. Let's turn everything down. We'll start with the drums, all right? Bring up the bass. the other guitar. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pan the drums, right? Just to get make them sound, because right now they're all in the middle. Right? If I pan them, it sounds like I'm standing in front of them more like, right? Something like that, maybe. The bass will stay in the middle. And then, uh, let's pan these guitars hard right, your typical metal, right? There you go. Right, let's check another part of the song over here. Drop. 
all right, there's a metal, metal band. These guys liked Pantera. The Pantera were their, their, their heroes. All right. Uh, so there you go, right? We could do the same thing like we did the other one, right? You come over here, you highlight, oops, that's not what I wanted, there we go. We highlight the length of our mix, right? And then we hit like up here, once you got it the way you like it, right? And you hit bounce to disc, just like that, right? Uh, what I want you guys to do is to, um, I want you to send me your mix. That's, that's, that's how I want you to turn in your homework. I want you to mix it down and send it to me. Uh, again, I'm not exactly sure where, sure if Blackboard will allow us to do that. He might have to email it to me. Um, and it's and it, of course, if you email it to me, it's going to have to be uh, an attachment, and it's going to have to be a um, it's going to end up on Google Drive because it's too big, right? Now, if you're using your, you have to use your ACC email. Uh, ACC students and faculty have unlimited Google Drive, so don't worry about putting stuff up there. You're not going to run out of space, right? Um, I guess I should show you how to do that. Huh? Here we go. So I'm going to bounce to disk, long sleep. Uh, it's going to go in that bounce files folder. Here we go. Multiple mono. That's not what I want. I want interleaved. All right, that's fine. 24 bit, 44 one looks good. Long sleep. Uh, and cool. Um, homework. There we go. Call it homework. Do an offline bounce. Here we go. Do a really good fast. Boom. We're done. All right. So I'm going to quit Pro Tools. There we go. There we go. And so what I need to do is email that, right? So I'm going to come over here, get me email here. There we go. Email coming. Uh, there we go. All right, I'm going to come over here and, oh, you know what? Yeah, let's do this here. I'm going to go to email. Hold on a second here so you guys don't steal my stuff. I'm going to log in. Ta -da -da. Here's my, uh, there we go. Oh, look at that. Compose. I'm going to send this to, um, Any day now. They're still loading. Oh, here we go. I'm going to send it to um, Danny at uh, Telesonic Audio.com. Danny at Telesonic Audio.com. That's uh, that's me. That's my other, my other persona. <laughs> Go. I'm gonna attach it. Here we go. Click that right down there. It's asking me, hey, where is this? It's right here. In the oop, da, 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 where is it? Audio One to Summer Sessions and Star Trek Metal Pro Tools. There we go. Metal Pro Tools. Bounced files. There it is. Da 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 da. I attach it. Hit open, and it's gonna. You know, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna send it. But there it is, right? You hit open. It wants. It'll put make it a, a Google Drive document to be shared, and there you go. All right? That's how you do it.